own heritage and created a level of aspiration for our people, which everybody in India got immersed in. And finally, we got our independence back. For him, there were four principal pillars on which he had based this movement. The first was to define the understanding of Purna Swaraj, or complete independence. Uh, we were under British colonial rule, as you know, at that time. The second was to recognize the power of the people. And this is in many ways what led to uh, strengthening and the democratic spirit within my country. The third, very important, was to have a total opposition to say no to, the, to any form of injustice or oppression, and to have it from within. And he brought about uh, the non-cooperation movement, which we in Hindi call the Asaigo Andolan. And uh, the fourth, which is perhaps the one that is most well known about Mahatma Gandhi was his firm conviction in truth. For him, truth and nonviolence were two sides of that same idea, which was indivisible. And this is what gave birth to his movement of Satyagraha, or the belief in truth as a movement, and ahimsa, which is nonviolence. Uh, it's rather fortunate that this year we are commemorating uh, the 150th uh, birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. He was born, as you uh, must have seen, on the 2nd of October in, uh, 19, in 1869. And there are going to be ceremonies across the world, culminating in New York on the 2nd of October next year, which will be the 150th birthday. And over time, uh, he was born in India, Mahatma Gandhi, but he became a citizen of the world. And over time, he influenced many world leaders and the masses at large. And his ideas and beliefs uh, still have a very strong relevance and resonance in the modern world. And there are two that perhaps uh, require further elaboration, and this is something that we would like to have for the discussions around. Uh, one was about his ideas about change, and the second one was about nonviolence. Um, in many ways, Gandhi was a very committed revolutionary. Uh, we've seen that the fragility of modern civilization has been exposed to very frightening pressures all around us, and there have been several uh, ineffective approaches to conflict resolution. Gandhi's success, in the manner in which he fought colonialism, uh, his success redeemed the belief that there is no inevitability in historical experience. In other words, you can change it. He suggested that there is a viability for truth and nonviolence, even in modern situations, not so long ago. And then his practice, as we know, was followed so closely by so many others, including Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, and they continue to be practiced in my country in many, many ways. And in his fight against colonialism, he had provided a key to the resolution of the dilemma of how one can behave peacefully and at the same time actively. So for him, nonviolence was actually a very active participation. And this can effectively oppose oppression and injustice. And these are some things that we see around us. As well. The second was, uh, Gandhi was, uh, throughout his life, an experimenter in the development of war without violence. Uh, we are constantly in battle. But how to do that without violence, and how one sees the peace within oneself and extends that beyond. So his work was rather pioneering in this field, but it was obviously not adequate, and I think he himself was experimenting all the time, but it does represent a very significant development of, uh, of historic proportions, uh, both in ethics as well as in politics. And these are some of the issues that 
uh, in our discourse and our discussions with uh, people here, we would like to develop. And it provides some deep insights as to how we go about the modern understanding of governance. So we are very delighted that we are starting this lecture series, the Mahatma Gandhi lecture series, not only to remember the great soul, uh, Mahatma means the great soul, but also to explore his contemporary relevance. And uh, his contemporary relevance will come about through these discussions uh, in, in our exchanges and dialogue that we hope to have with the Turkish civilization, uh, in culture and academics, uh, in technology and economics, and also in politics and security, because in many ways, this is the way we would like to remember uh, the Mahatma. Uh, so it gives me very great pleasure to welcome you all to this first inaugural lecture of the Mahatma Gandhi Lecture Series. And I'm extremely delighted and honored that Professor Korhan Kaya has agreed to be our inaugural speaker for this event. Uh, Professor Kaya is the head of the Indology Department at the Ankara University. The Indology Department was formed a very, very long time ago, and Professor Kaya has carried on that baton uh, very, very effectively. He is a great scholar of Sanskrit and Hindi. He has authored several books on Indian literature, culture, philosophy, and most fascinating, he has translated a range of Indian epics and literature from ancient times. Most recently, soon after I had come, he presented me with a copy of the Rig Veda, which is one of our oldest uh, texts. Uh, the Rig Veda was written probably about years ago. Um, it was part of the oral tradition, uh, and Professor Kaya has earlier done translations of the uh, Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, books on Hinduism, Buddhism, on common tales, common stories between India and Turkey and many others. So tonight we are looking forward to a very fascinating presentation from Professor Kaya. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I understand Professor Kaya is going to be talking on Indian literature, influences and exchanges. Uh, thank you again for being part of this uh, new initiative of the Embassy of India. We hope to do this once every quarter, and we will have people from different walks of life to continue this process of exchange between our two great civilizations, India and Turkey. Thank you very much. Obtaining goods is meaningless before uh, many, many years ago. He's a himself. are very important works about philosophy. Chanakya, the other name is Kautilya, the minister of Chandragupta, is a person who lived 100 years before Machiavelli, Italian Machiavelli. His work, Arta Shastra, is an important report written about state administration. As a culture with their enemies, literature. India is a country who created Kalidasa, who is the open likeness to Shakespeare. Actually, reverse of this, Shakespeare's likeness looks like uh, Kalidasa, because he is a thousand years before. Goethe admires Kalidasa. Shudraka originated from this land. Buddha, who, who born in